Hey everybody, welcome to the first section of Onshape kind of 101 tutorials. I'm gonna break it down into probably like four or five separate little 10 minute segments so that it's easy to watch. And my name's Chris Kaminsky and you know, normally I'm running the Fab Lab, Lecture Fab Lab, which is right behind me in this picture. Um, but now things, you know, times things are different. So we're doing this virtual and hopefully this will help you get started with Onshape, which is a pretty powerful program. Uh, it's web-based, you know, it's 3D CAD. So it's up there with like SolidWorks and Autodesk, you know, ver various platforms like Inventor or Fusion 360 or um, uh, what's the other one, Creo. That's another popular one. But you can get started with Onshape with their free education plan. Um, or their, sorry, they have multiple plans. So they have a paid version, which is, you know, about $1,200 a year, which is cheap for CAD. Um, then they have their Onshape free which anybody can sign up for. The caveat with that is your documents are not private, so they're public. So if I made something called top secret invention number one and I named it that, and somebody else could search for it if they knew what they were searching for or just randomly stumble upon it and copy it. Um, so that's kind of the caveat. And then the education plan actually, uh, you, you have private documents because they give you a little um, help because it's education based. So if you go to onshape.com forward slash education hyphen plan up here, just Google onshape education plan and it'll give you the link. Sign up with your school email here, create the account. There's really, I don't think there's any waiting. It just automatically creates it, especially if you have an EDU email. Um, so we'll go and I'll sign in. So onshape.com is how you sign in. O N S H A P E dot com. And this video will basically just kind of be the the interface of the screen and where things are located. We'll sign in with my school one. <laughs> okay, so when you log in, when you have some files made, you'll see this kind of interface. So at the top here, you could search for files in your on shape. So let's say I wanted to find this Mia Culpa sword. I could search for it there. And then anything with that name will come up any minute now there. So different versions of the file. So let's go back to my on shape here. If you want to go home, you can click on the on shape or my on shape. It'll take you back home. You could change this. You could get a lot more detailed with your searching. If you have a different criteria, um, you can actually go to recently opened. You can go to created by me, shared with me. So if somebody, if I design a file and share it with your email, that person can access it. It's kind of helpful. I can create labels for projects. So if I have a customer that like NOAC machine products, you know, um, I create a label for them for something we did. So I could quickly find a certain customer public. So this is where I was telling you before that if your documents are created with a free plan or you can make a document public if you want to share it, it doesn't have to be hidden. But these are the kind of things um, that you can see who, who made it, when they made it, how many likes, how many copies. Uh, so let's click on this one because the SpaceX Falcon 9 is kind of cool. So I can't actually edit their file, but I can, oh wow, this is pretty legit. <laughs> I can, uh, copy it right here. So it's view only. I can rotate it and do all kinds of cool stuff to look at it. Um, but then let's say I want to like, oh, this is cool. I want to save this to mine. So I can make a copy and it will copy it into my workspace. So this is helpful if you, you're like, man, I, I, I want to have to design something from the ground up or, you know, I know this is probably out there, but I want to modify it. It's good to maybe t search into public documents a little bit. Um, <laughs> Any minute now. So now I have a copy of it that I can edit. So it looks like they used a sketch, or uh, sorry, a photograph of the actual capsule and they based their sketches off of uh, the photograph, which is very cool. And it's a very uh, nice way to get stuff done quickly instead of having to figure things out um, by scratch, from scratch, you can follow contours and all that kind of cool stuff. So now I have this file and I can go back and edit it. I can um, cut things, I can add things, you know, 
now, now it's mine. <laughs> uh, so down, we'll go over some of the interface here for like a part. So on the left here, these, this is your feature tree. Um, these are all the different features. So like revolves and sketches and planes and extrudes, you know, tons of stuff that we'll you'll eventually get, get to learn. We'll start really slow in the next lesson. Um, so when I create um, features, like so let's say I create bodies using like these sketches and an extrude. Every time I do that, if I make them separate, they create, it creates separate parts down here. So you have a part, a part, tree we'll call it and you have a feature tree so if i go back and let's say i see this revolve here i can click on it it will highlight what part it actually did you can kind of see that outline on the screen now if i go here and i can and i can suppress it it'll basically suppress everything back until that point because everything else underneath that like the thick and ten um, the escape thruster, all that depends on that revolve. So everything that it depends on will uh, be suppressed as well. That's called parametric modeling. So it's powerful, but it, you know, if you go back and change something, like say I make this, you know, this revolve is probably driven off of like a sketch up for up here further. So if I go back and I want to edit one of these sketches right there, I can edit it, and I change something, it'll change everything that that thing to, that sketch depends on um, so it's cool it's you know if you've used tinkercad it's not parametric you know you just push and pull shapes and but if you want to change the size of something you have to go in and do it manually every time so down here at the bottom so when you create a part file you have uh, these right here this is a part file um, these are all part files so i can actually go between the different part files You could create, let's say you had, you wanted to make the rocket, you wanted to make the capsule, you wanted to make the door, you wanted to make the thrusters all separate. You could do that in different part files. Um, and then you can attach those part files with what's called an assembly, whoops, which would be like right here. I click on this plus and I can uh, create, a, I could create a new part studio, I could create an assembly, and then I could add those parts together. Um, I could create a drawing from this, or I can create a folder. Folders are nice for when you're, um, trying to organize so you don't have like a super long uh, list of parts at the bottom here. So I might create a folder. Let's say I'm going to upload a file, right? Because I can import files. I might create a folder that's just imports and I'll put all the imported stuff there. It's a nice way to organize. Um, so let's go back to the home page. But th that was just to show you what, what you can do with a public document. So go to my on shape. All right, so this is the home screen you log in. These are the different folders that I have, uh, different documents. Uh, oh, one quick thing here, Learning Center, this is very cool. They have like lessons <clears throat> that walk you through the process of learning this program. Maybe, <laughs> there we go, it's loading. So this is free, just intro classes and it tells you about how long they take and um, it's pretty cool. Uh, this one, self-paced courses. Boom. So you can learn all these different types of stuff. These are very well worth uh, going through. So we go back here. Now let's say I wanted to create a new document. So if I click create there, I could create a folder, I could create a document, I could import, I could label. So that, that's how you would start a new document. So uh, let's see, anything else I want to talk about here? I guess you can see in the bottom here, it says subscription education, right? So you'll know if you did the education right, the education thing right, if uh, that's on there. So let's say I wanna create a new, let's create a new folder. Let's call this lesson, whoops, lesson one on shape. There it is. So we'll go that in that folder. Now I'm gonna create a document in that folder We'll just call this lesson one. So it opens the document automatically. And when you first create a document, you see three planes. So those planes are what you will use to create your sketches on. So in parametric based, sketch based CAD, you use planes and um, other features like axes uh, for rotation to create your various features. 
right now we'll just kind of talk about some of the um, the different options up here. So you can see in the bottom here, it says part studio one. So what I do is I'll go in and rename these. So we'll call this lesson one box because we're going to make a box in the next, the next video. Uh, you can see it creates a default assembly when you create it. So this is empty now because we don't have anything. On the feature tree, you can actually hide planes and other uh, features and sketches and stuff like that. So as you start to add to that, you can actually hover over them and hide them. That's very helpful because sometimes there's a lot of sketches on here and it gets, an, it gets kind of annoying. So an example, real quick, I'll do a sketch on that plane. If I want to go to a normal view, because right now you can see it's sketch one right there. If I want to change view, I can use this navigational box up here and I can click on the top and it will automatically go up there. Or when I already have created the sketch um, and you can see sketch one, sketch two, whatever, if I hit N on the keyboard, it goes normal. That's a nice little quick shortcut. So let's just draw just a quick box real quick. And I'll just to show you. So I have a sketch there, I exited my sketch. So now I'm gonna do an extrude. Okay, so you can see it created a feature, it created a sketch. So I actually can actually unhide the sketch or hide it. They, when you use the sketch to create a feature, it usually automatically hides it. Um, and now I have a part down here. So I could hide that, toggle that visibility. So that's kind of cool. I could actually rename this part too. So I could call this, you know, bottom box, whatever. Um, let's see. So this navigation box, like I started to show you, is kind of nice to go to different views. So if I click and hold my mouse, I can rotate, right? But if I wanna look at this thing from the exact side, I can click on the right, right? And then I could uh, rotate it like this. Let's see, I can, if I click this, this drop down here, I could go to what's called an isometric view, which is kind of like, like, I don't know, like out at an angle. <laughs> it's like the default view. I could zoom to fit. Um, zoom to fit window, drag a bounding box, boom. So there's all these different tools uh, for over here. I can train, change the uh, translucent so that it's see-through, right? That's helpful if I maybe had some stuff inside of it and I want to be able to see inside of it. Uh, shaded. Oh, I accidentally went to assembly. Now let's go here. We'll change this back to shaded there. Okay, so when you're using this sketch tool up here, there's all these other features next to it. You'll we'll probably only be using a couple of them to start, um, but these are basically all your operations. Let's say you were gonna go do something and you needed to, you didn't, you don't remember exactly what it was called or where the, the option was. So I guess an example of that would be, let's say I wanna do the enclose, um, but I couldn't think of where that was couldn't remember. So I just type over here and it starts to give me the options. So that's kind of cool. That's helpful. And I guess that'll do it for this video because um, we'll get into actually drawing and designing in the next one. I guess one more thing that's helpful is if you click on an edge, right, you can see a length pop up 2.658 at the bottom. Um, I can click on that and get an area too. If I click on like a surface or if I click on multiple edges, it'll give me the angle right there. And I think maybe it doesn't give you the total length. Thought it did. So I can also click on that little tape measure looking guy down here. And I could click on, let's say this guy, this point and this point. And it will give me that minimal distance between them as 3.14. So it's helpful for, you know, quick, do it on the fly, quick um, measurements. All right. Stay tuned for uh, episode two, where we'll actually get to do some more features in drawing.